there are many intriguing ancient ruins still to be explored, still in existence dotting our planet, many of which are yet to be fully explained. Enigmatic stone carvings, and often tool marks left upon quarried or cracked or broken stones, each indicative of lost technology and thus a lost civilization. We have in the past covered a number of these ancient anomalies, the Plain of Jars located in Laos being but one of these extraordinary sites. Enormous stone jars that would simply be illogical to create in the modern era, yet would have been even more illogical for our well-studied yet far less capable ancient ancestors to have created them. Why these mysterious sculptures were created, and possibly most important of all, when they were made, is an enigma still left within our past. And the Kachari ruins are of no exception. A set of stone ruins located in Dimapur, Nagaland, northeast India. According to academia, their history dates back to the 10th century, when they apparently appeared during what is now known as the Kachari civilization. According to this hypothesis, they were created by the Kachuri Kingdom, which ruled the area before the Anam invasion during the 13th century AD. They are a series of mushroom dome pillars, which, just like that of the ancient jars of Laos, their original purpose remains a complete mystery. And although of considerable size and weight, are still considered to have once been a part of a game similar to that of chess, yet any explanation of how these enormous statues were moved remains conveniently unexplained. As expected, due to their inexplicable nature, the site has been largely overlooked by funded academia. It seems that the fact that these remnants are clearly indicative of a civilization of tremendous capabilities, including the refined finish of the sculptures, has meant that academics simply avoid discussing or exploring the site in its entirety. Not only is the site neglected by academic study, but the vast majority of these ancient artifacts have unfortunately crumbled during their long life, which has led many alternative researchers to volley against the Indian government, demanding that more be done to protect the site and to subsequently avoid the ancient site from suffering even more erosion or of unfortunate vandalism. Who created the Kachari ruins? When were they created? What was its original purpose? It seems, regardless of these questions being of great historical importance, what is apparently more precious to funded individuals and the institutions in which their conformity to existing, yet highly disputed chronologies of man subsequently prop up their selected fields of apparent study, and are more than willing to aid in the continuation of fallacies, if that means the continued survival of their field of choice. It would appear that these ancient stoneworks, each of an enormous size, are all ancient uparts, whose sheer existence is enough of a deterrent for academia to even mention the existence of, let alone publish any explanatory studies of the ruins absent any published journals. Away from academic ignorance, however, the local population inevitably has their own supposed surviving story regarding the creation and origins of the stones, which now forms a nice amalgam of Indian mythology. As per this mythology, Bahim and Hadimba got married at the site in antiquity, later giving birth to Gadoka at the site. And according to this local folklore, it's said that Bahim and his child used to play chess here with these pieces. And although clearly of mythology, it is better to attribute the ruins and to attempt an explanation in regards to a creator of tremendous capabilities, we feel. Better this than what we currently experience complete ignorance of this precious yet highly delicate, still surviving ancient ruins. It is a place which we find highly compelling. From their curious writings made upon cuneiform blocks, there are endless areas of intrigue when it comes to ancient Mesopotamia. A fascinating and rare civilization, which had an equally striking appearance, often adorned with trinkets with tightly braided, often thick flowing hair, with royals regularly depicted as giants. It is also a very special area of interest for our so-called fringe research. The reason for this is that Mesopotamia is one of those rare chapters of ancient civilization, which regardless of all previously noted, 
has strangely continued to be accepted by mainstream institutions, field studies apparently still flowing. As previously mentioned, this astonishing, and we feel, far older than currently claimed civilization, is drenched with marvels of seemingly impossible ancient craftsmanship, many of which near impossible to explain in regards to currently claimed history. The reoccurring theme one finds when another post-Ice Age technologically regressed ancestor moves in to utilize these structures offered safety will, in turn, leave behind an archaeological timeline. This then allows for an inaccurate and often blatantly ignorant dating. But to muddy said waters are then met with a detailed, competent reconstruction of said lifestyles, religious beliefs, systems, etc., etc., all in regards to a permitted ancestor, rather than any details or logical explanation as to their technologies or constructions. However, as mentioned, going back to the recurring event we notice is the briefest of these supposed builders' legacies, for when one has laid claim to an antediluvian wonder, the lack of understandings regarded the fortress's strength, or indeed how to efficiently use them, the ingenious design of some of the most impressive fortresses of Peru, Sacsayhuaman, Kulap, for example, we posit, if under the control of the original constructors, would have been near impossible to evade and were completely self-sustained. Yet the academically claimed builders all seem to conveniently fold within less than a few centuries at most. However, the subject of most importance and currently the most compelling exhibits of an ancient advanced civilization is the nature of many of the artifacts, either recovered or now documented as having been depicted across much of their stone-cut artwork. And across Mesopotamia, notably the Assyrian civilization, they had achieved levels of technological sophistication simply impossible to have achieved in the brief, currently attested chronological life of said civilizations. Whether the Assyrian civilization and many others spanning ancient Mesopotamia have indeed been accurately identified, then an explanation for the array of remarkable technologies they had developed becomes a very hard area of archaeology to describe. Scuba divers, secret teachings, sophisticated levels and practices of law and healthcare, and most notably, and indeed the most vital section of the civilization's skill set, their intimate understandings that lay within their ability to create irrigation and agricultural systems which rival even those of the modern day. These tremendous abilities tend to make us suspect that either the dating of Mesopotamia is drastically off, or these feats of engineering were, like many others, adopted by this later settlement, ultimately decoded and claimed as an invention of their own. Astonishing legends of the past, accompanied by an astonishing level of sophisticated astronomical knowledge, is another crucial factor which not only indicates what we are attesting, but what we feel could have only come from an extremely old source. Tributes to which seemingly found incorporated into nearly all surviving relics. Yet, as if academia claim, this ancient civilization merely wielded stone and very later bronze tools. The question is, how did they create such astonishing ancient ruins? The multi-ton Lamassu a mysterious stone-winged horse we have covered previously on numerous occasions, it seems just like that of the so-called pre-Incas, displayed levels of sophistication specifically around horticulture, far in advance of what we should have logically presumed to see. It is as if they had a helping hand by a far more ancient yet highly advanced intellect somewhere within antiquity. Are these Upart surviving remnants? memories left by a pre-cataclysmic civilization, once capable of such sophisticated irrigating and building on steep mountain land with ease, we can for now only hypothesize. It is a pursuit we find highly compelling. Who built the Great Pyramids? Who carved Kailash Temple? Who quarried, carved, and transported the Moai statues around the coastline of Easter Island? The reason for our persistence in reiterating these questions 
is that it unlocks one's perception to the reality of unknowns. They suddenly notice that there are some things about the past in which they had been taught were a lie. The ancient marvels of India as but one example. How can those who are placed in a position of trust, responsibility, and above all critical thought, explain these stoneworks away as ones coming from the hands of untrained slaves? Yet even when these ruins are presented as that of the work of ancient masters, the tools and metal technologies available to any of them were simply incapable of accomplishing these refined, masterfully finished feats sometimes leaving walls of granite so precisely executed, they became reflective. The more one studies these stone-worked anomalies, still abundant amongst the many as yet unexplained sites all over the world, you soon begin to see scars and marks left upon these stones, reminiscent of modern-day electric power tools, and some indicative of stone-cutting technology, which evades even our own modern capabilities like that of the star holes we have covered in the past. These mysterious artifacts suggest the civilization responsible was not only advanced, but possibly once more advanced than modern man. Panoia's Sanctuary According to academia, once ordered to be built by the Roman senator Caius Calpurnius Rufinus, they claimed the sanctuary was dedicated to infernal deities headed by Serapis and the deities of Lapetius. However, due to the astonishing precision of some of the stone cuts made into these large granite boulders, we posit that the Romans were merely re-inhabitors of this, along with many other ancient structures, to which mystery history attests the creation of, were far out of the capabilities of the Roman Empire itself. Furthermore, that the Romans rapidly recorded technological and agricultural developments just like that of the Inca, Mayan, Egyptian, etc., was largely the result of deciphering, reverse engineering, and the eventual adoption of technological relics left by a far more capable, once world-going, yet now lost civilization. At the site, there are many impressive ancient stone-carving achievements. Perfectly square boreholes, largely perfect cylindrical drill holes, left in the hard granite many thousands of years ago. The volume and abundance of lichen species, and the sizes these colonies have become, also confirming the great age and authenticity of the boreholes and the site itself. Ultimately, if one wishes to conclude that this ancient sanctuary was indeed the work of the claim builder, proof must be provided that said individuals were capable of such incredible work not only capable of the task, but the cut upon stones engulfed with millennia-old colonies of lichen without seemingly damaging them. For many colonies now draped across the stoneworks, we attest are far older than the Roman Empire itself, with many flowers already a considerable size before they watch the Romans arrive, thrive, and eventually disappear. Yet alas, without biological proof of the age of some of these species, and the fact that any funded institution would dismiss any of the dates we would pursue as anomalies, it appears the jury remains out on the site, and the debate rages on. It is a place which we find highly compelling. Inexplicable, enigmatic, still surviving ancient Uparts, named after their academically claimed creators, the Kachari Ruins, a set of large and incredibly heavy relics whose purpose or indeed true age remains a largely ignored area of study by any individual who depends on institutional funding for their career survival. Yet there are many other ancient sites which litter modern-day India whom have an equally enigmatic history. Some of these sites we have covered in the past, like that of Kailash Temple, a remarkable ancient achievement carved directly from a bedrock of earth with such artistic vision and accuracy that any logical explanation for its creation remains a challenging and still elusive reality surrounding not only the many sites we have already covered, but countless others which still lay either undiscovered or deliberately ignored by mainstream media. Yet our next area of interest has encountered a polar experience, 
having been officially acknowledged as one of India's most important of ancient sites. Known as the Udiagri Caves, they are a set of 20 rock-cut caves near Vidisha, Madhya Pradesh, and according to mainstream historians, dates from the early years of the 5th century. We have often postulated that some ancient religions, having survived the test of time, and we have often encountered Buddhist or Hindu belief systems engraved upon currently inexplicable stone carvings and ancient structures, which we feel are indicative of a lost civilization's advanced capabilities. Cave 5, in particular, possesses depictions of ancient reptilian creatures, later attributed to ancient religious systems. Yet the original inspiration for these carvings is an ongoing mystery, and whether inspired by religious beliefs or possible real events, is an ongoing mystery that mainstream academics continue to stifle the legitimacy and mainstream adoption of. Claimed as that of Vishnu, this depiction of a giant reptile consuming comparatively tiny human figures is a depiction which is undoubtedly of great historical importance Yet we hypothesize that only a small portion of existing human history has ever been explored in detail, or indeed permitted to be a mainstream possibility. Udiagri literally means the Sunrise Mountain, and is, interestingly, not the only ancient site with this name located within modern-day India. Udiagri Wazi was a Buddhist and Bhagavad Gita site by the 2nd century, as evidenced by the Heliodorus Pillar. Yet this inhabitation is possibly merely the adoption of a surviving structure. Additionally, while the Heliodorus Pillar has supposedly been preserved without damage, many other similar sites are all but dilapidated ruins, possibly suggesting that this claim of creation is in reality a hoax. And while Buddhism was prominent in Sanchi near Uriyagari in the last centuries of the first millennium BCE, it is highly possible that the religious teachings date from a lost period of ancient history. According to Das and Willis, recent archaeological evidence, such as the Udiagari Lion Capital, suggests that there was a sun temple at Udiagari. The Surya tradition in Udiagari dates from at least the 2nd century, and possibly one that predated the arrival of Buddhism. It is this tradition that gives it the Sunrise Mountain name and we feel is yet more supportive evidence in defense of the channel's postulations. It is a place which we find highly compelling. Many of the most ancient stone structures we cover here upon our channel, whose origins undoubtedly span far back into Earth's antiquity, in our experience are often, unfortunately, due to the rigid, unchanging conclusions set forth in regards to academic history just over a century ago, will not only encounter reoccurring anomalies, suspiciously precise stone cuts, unexplainable by any of our lesser capable yet institutionally permitted ancestors with whatever said civilization were to equip with, yet regardless and rather arrogantly refuse to budge in terms of the official tale of events. This then means that anyone with critical thinking skills will continually and often come across feats of ancient engineering somehow accomplished by said people, enormous and perfectly refined stone carvings, that, according to, and as a result of, academic institutions' reluctance to budge, must be explained away as having, somehow, once been cut and created with tools of a soft metal. Yet in reality, this is simply an impossibility. It is a lie only possible on paper, yet this lie is mass-printed all over our planet. It is in mystery history's opinion that these advanced and thus inexplicable features which litter our videos in abundance are each and all clear evidence of a far more advanced yet far more ancient and thus lost civilization. Additionally, another reoccurring theme anyone exploring this confusing, enigmatic, and although little shared, ever-growing list of ancient, unexplainable structures, no funded individual dare attempt to explain the methodology of said build, but will find that they are, instead, extremely eager to willingly and immorally seal the fate of these marvelous buildings' legacy, condemning them to the ever-growing list we like to call the label of the tomb. 
a ruthless, willing, and well-funded army of researchers tasked with exploring any archaeology from a very specific time period. Thus, we posit any re-inhabitation of said site's archaeology is used nearly always absent an explanation as to how they built said buildings, depending the construction on whom is most convenient. An eventual attribution for all of these exquisite and quite possibly incredible important historical relics as simply tombs. We have in the past touched upon false doors, claimed witchcraft, which seemingly permeated all ancient civilizations worldwide, from littering the 1,000-ton-plus toppled obelisk of Aksum, exposing the advanced ruins in Ethiopia, but also the Giza Plateau among countless other locations on Earth seemingly spanning many lost civilizations' ruins. And the site which is the focus of this video, we feel, is one of the most awe-inspiring false doors on Earth. When it comes to false doors, a sheer mountain side carved away perfectly, not only creating a tomb of master stonework in a time of history, when this should have simply been impossible. Its false door, however, proof of its far greater age, leading into some incredible landscape, makes it a site which undoubtedly adds intrigue to the mystery of the false door, and whether we will ever unlock its fullest potentials. We previously covered one in Peru in a subject-specific film. Link will be at the end. Local legend claimed it was once a portal. It is clearly a false door, as seen all over the world, just like that of Axum, seemingly laser-cut into the hillside. What we found highly compelling, however, was that it had been cut into the only mountainside in all of Peru to have possessed an extremely rare earth element in the stone which we now use in high-end transmission of radio, sound, and light waves. Every day, we get closer and closer to finally understanding what these doors were. Kapilikea Rock Tomb is not only an extraordinarily well-located ruin, located in Kirkdilim, 27 kilometers north of Churum, Turkey, on a rocky, steep, rough-formed, thus hard bedrock. It is clearly a relic of one of the lost civilizations we have long been studying not only due to the precision of the stone cut, the masterful choice of location, but also the use of the false door, in our opinion, proves beyond doubt that this ruin was made by the same lost civilization or civilizations as we are currently pursuing an identity and a legacy for here upon our channel. A civilization once capable of moving and building with 1,000 plus ton megalithic stones possibly even the builders of, or the descendants of the true group of people responsible for the great pyramids themselves. Many things which do not add up are often overlooked or dismissed. But in our experience, the ancient ruins never lie, if you let them tell the story, and explore said relics with a quest to understand what they may still be able to tell us. It does not matter what others may claim, for as we know, the truth will always prevail, and that is something we find highly compelling. Something which has always puzzled us at Mystery History Although the mountains of pyramids, the gigantic megaliths, indestructible artifacts, or the out-of-place artifacts, is the massive amount of underground cities found all over our planet. Extraordinary undertakings, seemingly necessary at some time in the very distant past. Complex tunnel networks almost telepathically hewn direct to each other. Cut from hard bedrocks, with many exhibiting considerable efforts committed into security. Huge rolling doors can be found at many crucial junctions within the underground systems, as can be found, for example, amongst the underground cities of Cappadocia. Derinkuy in particular still exhibits its rolling doors still in situ. No one displaying the builder's impressive capabilities, but also the abilities of the rolling stone operators, as whoever built these contraptions unarguably still possessed megalithic stone-moving knowledge, knowledge we hypothesize is lost knowledge 
due to the builders of said sites also a lost civilization, which instead of where they have been placed chronologically by funded investigations, actually, we believe, originate an unimaginably longer time ago, placed far within an antiquity not only lost, but actively dismissed. But regardless of the impressive feats these underground cities were to create, the question persists, why? Why go to so much effort? The cities of Uskanakt, Derinkuyu, and Kemakli, all found just within Cappadocia, Turkey, are not only some of the most complete underground dwellings, with Derinkuyu estimated to have once been capable of housing 20,000 people. Derinkuyu even connects to Kemakli via an underground tunnel, an astonishing 8 kilometers long. And this is but a tiny fraction of the ancient underground cities, which have so far been found all over the world with more discovered each day. Many seem to have simply been sealed when no longer needed. Thus, many still lay undisturbed to this day. Derinkuyu, for example, was only rediscovered when a wall was knocked down in a house during renovation work. All seemingly constructed around the same time, yet any definitive motivations for why ancient man decided upon such drastic efforts worldwide have yet to be substantiated. Their construction remains a complete mystery, a fact we find highly intriguing. Many people will argue that these cities were chiseled by slaves over many years and at great suffering, a safe bet narrative which jives with the mainstream. When it comes to the academically claimed ages, and due to the people during said ages substantially lacked any advanced stone-cutting technologies imperative for creating such vast works. This argument, however, thanks to the volumes of examples of exquisite, astounding feats discovered as a special few of these underground complexes, not only installed clearly to demonstrate an acoustic level of awareness on par with prodigal ability, and possibly many other as yet undeciphered features displaying excelled understanding of many of life's most intriguing subjects. The Hypogeum, located within modern-day Malta, is but one of many examples which can be presented as proof that whoever built these underground layers at minimum possessed astonishing acoustic knowledge, far ahead of man, as well as almost physics-defying stone-moving techniques displayed in the structure itself. The hypogeum possesses a characteristic designed into its construction, which is simply astonishing. It is so mystifying that although very little is known regarding how it was achieved, a certain frequency it can amplify which seems to stimulate the building's amplifying capabilities, as if the entire structure resonates, and has since been shown to also affect the human brain becoming known as the God Frequency. Who built these underground labyrinths? Why? When did they build them? We find these incredible relics of a lost civilization highly compelling. Many people from around the world have now, fortunately, been presented with and hopefully convinced enough thanks to platforms such as YouTube, particularly Egyptian constructional revisionists, to now realize that there are many as yet unexplained feats of ancient engineering which literally drenches these magnificent structures and its equally mysterious sandstone plateau below. Yet we further expose many other indicative features which were seemingly impossible feats of ancient engineering which we hope has helped a lot of people to realize that there are many fallacies in historical doctrine, many gaps in academic and curricular understandings many things dismissed with flaky strategies and theories which have again and again, thanks to modern computer engines, been proven as impossible maneuvers. It seems many people and a considerable amount of money goes into keeping a stranglehold over the pyramid's possible origins and original function, inevitably shrouding these structures in a veil of secrecy. In addition to the original pyramid blocks and the enormous megalithic exoskeleton visible in a few obscure areas of the pyramid's lower regions, we have also in the past put forward the hypothesis that due to the advanced nature of many of the pyramid's casing stones and the drastic differences in ages they appear to be, all made with the same type of rock, 
thus to display such drastically different levels of erosion, is undeniably evidence of them being installed at many different times. Yet although claimed as being built within known history, no documentation of the installation of the blocks, or indeed any explanation as to how these pyramids were built, all remain elusive. Several different styles were put upon these monuments, we feel, at vastly different times within antiquity. We posit that they are clear proofs of a number of past civilizations' conservation efforts, but due to these compelling and visible proofs, one has to consider that the Great Pyramid's origins are vastly more prehistoric than could ever be publicly accepted, and due to these features having seemingly survived due to what we suspect was a number of considerable efforts to shield them from the environment by a number of different, extremely ancient, yet all highly capable, yet now lost civilizations, which we have identified in previous work as that of the Cyclopean Civilization and the Polygonal Civilization. But I digress. Many of you who have donated towards the channel and to reserve a book may be wondering when the channel's accompanying books will be published. However, I assure you Mystery History intends to go in-depth regarding his and other findings surrounding not only the ancient pyramids, but also the many other compelling, seemingly impossible ancient legacies found throughout Giza's plateau and many museums, and many other controversial sleuth-gathered factors from throughout antiquity. Creating the type of evidence-driven, visually illustrated examinational content in which the books will be exclusively focused upon. All of these factors are reasons why the books will not be written hastily. As my knowledge grows, so does my understanding of what makes ancient ruins so enigmatic, and I believe the larger my research, the better the go-to guides will eventually be. I just wanted to reassure you that Mystery History has not forgotten about any of you. Returning to our opening statement, however, Many are now aware that there does not exist a valid explanation for the construction of the pyramids. Even if one had unlimited slaves, it is not a case of muscle, but rather a lack of space in which to utilize such. Yet what many who have not explored Giza and the surrounding connected ruins on foot are often oblivious of the astonishing array of ancient temples, clearly dating from the pyramid builders, not only lost for eons in the sand of the Sahara, but has preserved some in astonishing conditions. Ancient Egypt, its great pyramids, its eight-sided Cheops, its incredibly well-preserved, once long-engulfed temples, and the inexplicable stonework of ancient Egypt is but one of many areas from a world of ruins, which we not only intend to unravel as much as possible, but it is an investigational struggle which we find highly compelling.